Destiny 2 can be a very confusing game. It's been around for a while now, and the thought of diving into it and trying to figure it out now can be intimidating. So I decided I would take everything that I have learned about this game and put it into a video that would help new players get into the game and get started up as quickly and as smoothly as possible. But before we can dive into it, I feel like I need to warn you that this game changes very often. So depending on when you watch this video, some things could have changed. And also, if you're a new player and you have questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below, or you can join the Discord in the pinned comment and ask your questions there. You can also find people who are willing to teach you endgame activities in my Discord. So now that that's out of the way, let's just get right into it. One of the first things that you will need to do when you start playing Destiny 2 is pick your class. In Destiny 2, there are three classes which are Titan, Hunter, and Warlock. There will be subclasses within each class, but due to each class being different and offering different playstyles, it's important to start with a class that you will enjoy playing. So let's quickly just go over what each class can do. The Titan will be your basic frontline fighter. This class is very durable, allowing it to jump right into the middle of a fight, and it will have abilities that will benefit you and your team, making this a great choice for players who will either play through a lot of the content in the game alone, or for people looking to support their teammates. The Titan's class ability will allow them to create cover anywhere they want to to protect them in a fight, and their super abilities can range from swinging around a massive flaming two-handed hammer, or creating a large dome to shield themselves and their teammates from damage. The Hunter will be your Lone Wolf style class. They are very agile and usually use a hit and run style in fights. Now their kit doesn't have a lot of supporting abilities, but they make up for that by bringing a lot of damage and debuffs to the table. The Hunter's class ability will allow them to dodge away from a fight. This dodge can be adjusted to either instantly reload the Hunter's weapons, or make them invisible allowing them to quickly reposition. And as you could imagine, their super abilities will support this playstyle. They can use a Golden Gun super ability to deal massive amounts of damage, or they can pull out their knives and go invisible and slice through everything in their way. And finally, we have the Warlock. The Warlock class offers more of a supportive role, but they can still do a lot of damage and they have an easy time when playing through the game alone. But I would say they really shine in a team. The Warlock's class ability will be a healing or empowering rift. The healing rift will heal the Warlock and their teammates while they're standing inside of the rift, and the empowering rift will give the team a damage boost. And of course, the super abilities for the Warlock also benefit team play, like their Well of Radiance that will create a large AoE heal that will pretty much make everyone standing inside of it unkillable and boost their damage. Or they can throw around black holes that will damage and lock down enemies that they are fighting. But before you go further, I do feel like you should know that every class can use all of the weapons in the game, so you're not really limited in any way. And it's also very easy to create a new character and level that class up if you don't enjoy the first class that you pick. Once you have picked your class and created your character, you will be thrown into the game. So let's just go over what will happen within your first few hours of gameplay, and I'll toss in some tips along the way. Now your main goal during this tutorial is to complete the A Guardian Rises quest. You can track the progression of this quest in your quest log. To find this, just open up your map and go to the quest section. Over the course of this quest, you will learn all of the basics like combat, abilities, mounts, and gear. So now just focus on completing this quest. At the end of the quest line, you will enter your very first strike. We will talk a lot more about strikes and endgame activities later in this video, but the strike that you will do will be a lower level 3-man activity similar to a dungeon from World of Warcraft. Now for some tips that you can use during this quest line. 
Number 1. If you get lost and don't know where to go, all you will need to do is pull out your ghost by pressing tab on PC, or I think pause on console. Then you can just look around for a white diamond. This will be where you will need to go for your current objective. Tip number 2 is closer to the beginning of this quest, you will meet Sha Han. If you talk to him, you will be able to get a yellow item from him called Maeve's Key. Grab this and use it on the chest in the room beside him to get your very first exotic weapon. Tip number 3 is during this tutorial you will find some gear. It might not be the best gear in the game, but it will be better than what you currently have. So make sure you're always putting on the new gear that you find as you go. After you complete the Guardian Rises questline, you will be sent to the tower. This will be the main social hub for Destiny 2, where players can get new weapons and armor and more missions. We will go over a tour of the tower later in this video, but for now just talk to all of the NPCs that the quest will guide you to. At the end you will need to talk to Zafala, and he will give you a quest called A Spark of Hope. This will be your first exotic quest, and it will also be needed to progress further into the game. All you will need to do for this questline is open up your inventory and go to the Journey tab. The Journey tab will be a list of things that you will need to do to unlock features in the game and progress your Guardian rank. But for now, all you will need to do is click on the first option, then go to the tree beside Zavala and meditate. Then you can talk to Zavala again and he will send you to talk to Ikora. Ikora will be the person that you talk to to unlock new subclasses and upgrade the subclasses that you already have unlocked. After talking to her you will need to open up your quest log and complete the Learning Light quest back on the Cosmodrome. Once this quest is done, you can return to Ikora and she will give you two new quests to unlock your missing subclasses. And this is where the game will start to open up. From this point on, it's up to you on how you go through the rest of the game. But I would suggest focusing on those new quests that you have just gotten that will unlock your two missing subclasses, as these will be very important to have. Other than that, your goal is to level up your character to do the harder endgame activities. You can do this by finding gear that is higher level than what you currently have. When looking at a piece of armor in your inventory, it will have a power level on it. Wearing higher power level gear will increase your character's level. So let's take a closer look at everything you can do to level up. First up we have core activities, which will be Vanguard Strikes, Crucible, and Gambit. Vanguard Strikes will be 3 man dungeons that you can queue up for, and in these dungeons you will just need to run through the dungeon and kill the boss at the end for gear. Gambit will be a PvPVE mode where you will need to kill your boss before the other team kills theirs. And Crucible will be a PvP mode similar to Call of Duty where you will just fight other players in different game modes. In Gambit and Crucible, you will still get gear even if your team doesn't win. The next way to level up will be the main DLC storylines. If you have purchased any of the DLCs for Destiny 2, you can play through the storyline of them to get gear during and after each mission, but this does require you to spend real money. Next will be the open world. You can explore and participate in public events on each planet to earn gear. On each planet you can also find regional chests and lost sectors that will be full of useful items. On your map you will find two symbols. The rainbow looking symbol will be a lost sector, which are just small dungeons with a boss and a chest at the end, and the star symbol will be a golden regional chest that will have gear and resources inside of it. So it's not a horrible idea to go to each planet and just clear up the map. Another way to level up will be from the seasonal activities. If you buy the season pass, you can participate in the seasonal activities for limited time rewards like armor and weapons. Each season will also have a storyline inside of it that will give you a reward at the end of each mission, and you can claim gear from the season pass. And finally, the last way to level up will be from completing challenges and bounties. 
At the tower, the main NPCs will have a symbol over them on the map, and if you hover over it, it will tell you what you need to do to complete the challenge for their reward. Most of them will require bounties. To get bounties, just talk to the vendor and click on the bounties that they have for sale, and these will just be small, very easy side missions that shouldn't take too long to complete. Core activities will also have challenges to complete for rewards, and they are pretty simple to complete. For example, completing three Crucible matches will give you a reward even if you lose all three matches. So the goal in Destiny 2 is to get the best possible gear to make strong builds to take into endgame activities. And there is a lot of gear in Destiny 2. So how would you know if a piece of gear is good? And that's actually pretty simple. It all just depends on what you're looking for. When it comes to armor, you will want to hover over a piece of armor and look at the stats. At the bottom of the stats, you will see a stat total number. Generally speaking, the higher the stat total is, the better that piece of armor is. But that can change if you're looking for a specific stat. If you're trying to make a build that uses the intellect stat, you will want armor that has a high stat total, but you will want a majority of those stat points to be in the intellect stat. You can also further increase the total stat number on your armor by masterworking that piece of armor. To do this, right click on the armor piece, then click on the energy bar. This will level up that armor one time if you have the required materials. But if you level up a piece of armor up to energy level 10, you will gain 2 points in each stat for a total of 12 extra points. You can also masterwork a weapon, but instead this will increase the specific stat that was rolled on the masterwork section of this weapon. When it comes to weapons, it's a little more confusing. Most weapons in Destiny 2 will come with random rolls, which means you could get two of the same gun and they could feel and perform very differently. As you play through Destiny 2, you will start to understand what perks and weapon types feel best to you. But you can also go to the website destinyitemmanager.com and sign in with your account. Then on this website, you will see every piece of gear that you own. On some of the weapons that you own, you will see a thumbs up symbol. This means that that weapon is considered to be a very good roll and is worth keeping. As a side note, you can also use this app to move your items around without needing to go to the tower. With this website, you can pull guns out of your vault in the middle of activities, and you can retrieve items from your mailbox. Farming for good rolls on weapons can be tough, but if you own the Witch Queen DLC, you will gain access to weapon crafting, which will allow you to put the exact perks on the weapons that you want instead of having to farm for them. Exotic weapons, on the other hand, will almost always have the same perks and rolls on them. But exotics can be very rare, so you may not get a ton of them right away. But to get more, you will just want to look for exotic quests hidden across the game, and you can also get a few exotics on the weekend when Xur shows up. Xur will be a vendor that will only appear in the game on the weekend. And when he's in the game, he will be selling a few exotic armor pieces and some exotic weapons so it is worth it to keep an eye out for him. Another tip for you is that every piece of gear that you find in Destiny 2 will be added to your collection book. But exotic weapons and armor can be pulled out of that collection book if you ever lose them and need them again. Also, if you find a piece of gear that you really like, but it's a low level, you can infuse that piece of gear with the level from another item that you own. This will destroy the second item, but you will keep the item that you like, and it will level that item up to the level of the item that was destroyed. So by now you may be wondering what the endgame is that you are gathering up all of this gear for. The endgame activities in Destiny 2 are raids, dungeons, grandmaster strikes, and trials of Osiris. Now let's quickly go over each of those forms of endgame. First up will be raids. These will be challenging 6 player activities that require a lot of teamwork and communication to solve puzzles and beat difficult bosses. 
but due to the difficulty and the requirement of needing 5 other people, most players don't do raids. But you can find some of the best weapons and armor in the game in these raids. Next up are dungeons. Dungeons are basically a 3 person version of a raid. There will be difficult bosses and puzzles and amazing gear to chase after in these dungeons. Raids and dungeons will have multiple difficulty levels to get better gear from them. Next up are Grandmaster Strikes. These are the highest difficulty versions of a normal strike and they are not easy. In these strikes, there's not a lot of room for error. If everyone on your team dies at the same time, you will be sent back to orbit and you will need to try again from the start. And finally, we have Trials of Osiris. This is the main endgame activity for PvP players. In this activity, two teams of three go head to head in a PvP match. But to get the best gear from this mode, your team will need to win seven matches in a row without losing. This will send your team to the lighthouse and reward you with amazing gear. But if none of that sounds appealing to you, there is another form of endgame that a lot of players enjoy, and that is the completionist endgame. There are a lot of hidden items and achievements in Destiny 2 that people love to chase after. You could spend all day completing different achievements to add to your total achievement score, and acquire some cool items like mounts and titles along the way. Now for the last section in this video, I wanted to go over every important point of interest that I feel you should know about. So let's start off in the tower. First up we have Saint 14. This will be the vendor for the Trials of Osiris activity. Here you can get Trials weapons and bounties. Next we have the Postmaster. This will be the mailbox. If you miss anything on the ground, it will be sent to the Postmaster as soon as you return to orbit. Next up is Zavala. This will be your vendor for the Vanguard Strikes activity. Here you can get weapons and bounties for strikes. Next up is Shax. This will be the vendor for the Crucible. Here you can get weapons and bounties for the Crucible. After that we will have the Vault. This will be your bank that you can put weapons and armor into to keep them safe. Beside the vault you will find the exotic kiosk. Here you can buy old exotic and legendary weapons from past seasons and expansions. Next up will be Banshee. This will be your weaponsmith. This vendor will sell materials, bounties, and weapons. Beside Banshee you will find Master Raoul. This vendor will convert your resources into better resources and also decrypt the engrams you find. You can also purchase exotic gear from this vendor. Next up is Ikora. Ikora will sell you upgrades for your subclasses to help you create your builds. Beside Ikora you will find Hawthorn. Hawthorn will sell raid banners and clan bounties. Next will be 801. This vendor will be your go-to for armor, shaders, and transmog. You can also get bounties here to earn a currency that can be used during transmogging your gear. And finally we have the Drifter. This will be the vendor for your gambit bounties and weapons. The only other place that you should be aware of is the Helm. This location will be your hub for all seasonal content. Here you can find all of the bounties and gear from the current seasonal activities. And that's going to be pretty much it. But before this video ends, I just wanted to let you know that I plan on creating a ton of videos for Destiny 2 on this channel. So if this video has helped you, please consider subscribing to this channel as I'm sure my future videos will help you as well. And if you are also looking for a new clan in Destiny 2, you can check out the link in the pinned comment below to join the Destiny 2 clan that I have created. But anyways, I hope this video has helped you and thank you for watching.